Dental Associateship Reflection Part 1. Hi, my name is Dr. Avi and I'm a dentist. In this video, I'm going to talk to you guys about an associateship that I had. I feel like it's super helpful for me to share my experiences so that way you can learn from it. Hopefully you use this to your benefit and make the most of your opportunities. So this is part one of a series where I'm just going to be explaining and walking you guys through all the different associateship positions that I had over the years. In my first two years at a school, I had 10 in total. Let's talk about the first one. So I got my first job before I graduated dental school. My friend at the time had worked for a dental supply company and he knew a rep in the area that had a relationship with an office. That office was looking to hire an associate. The office was a PPO insurance office and it was one of eight in a group practice. Everybody was getting excited when the position lined up and I interviewed for it. It looked like it was gonna be a really good opportunity for everybody. I was looking for an office that was close to Manhattan because that's where I was living at the time. I found this practice in Connecticut, so it wasn't too far. I also wanted a practice where I could be mentored so that way I could learn as much as possible. This office was looking for an associate that was young and looking to be groomed so that way they could grow over time. I thought this is going to be amazing. So let's start with the positives. The doctor that worked in the practice was a partial owner. He took me under his wing and he gave me so much insight on a day-to-day -day basis. I learned so much from him and he was willing to teach me everything that he knew. Simple things like how to talk to people patients, how to do root canal, how to keep my treatment planning effective and efficient. He brought things up in a positive light and was always trying to educate me. He never made me feel bad about what I was doing. It was really nice to be working with an experienced dentist because if I ever had questions about anything, I could turn to him and go to him and he would help me out. This is something that you should try to get in your first couple jobs out of school. It's not a deal breaker, but it can really go a long way in terms of having that person to lean on in times of need. Another positive was the office vibe and dynamic. The office was very new and the staff was super friendly. Everyone was willing to help everybody. Everybody knew their roles and their responsibilities and the teamwork was amazing. This really goes a long way in terms of office efficiency and happiness. When it's a healthy work environment, all the employees are happy and this translates to the patient's experience. Patients can sense when there is a good office vibe or not. So it's great for the patients and honestly, it's great for your mental health. Now the negatives. A big negative about this practice was the number of patients I was seeing or lack thereof. The owners decided that the patients were gonna be split up in a way where I would see all the new patients and I would see existing patients of the other doctors, but only if they had limited treatment done, just like basic fillings and cleanings. If they had any pending treatment that was bigger than that, like crowns, root canals, extraction, stuff like that, that would stay with the other doctor. This was a challenge for me because I had no experience in diagnosing and treatment plan. So this led to me having an emptier schedule and not being able to maximize opportunity when it presented itself. The working owner at the time was not willing to sacrifice his own schedule or the pending treatment that he had diagnosed on patients. In my opinion, that's not an efficient way to support an associate and truly set them up for success. Because when the associate has an empty schedule, nobody benefits. A better way to go about this would have been if they filled my schedule with pending treatment that the other doctor had diagnosed, as well as giving me the opportunity to practice talking to patients and diagnosing my own work. This way I could get the confidence of physically doing treatment and learning how to diagnose new treatment. This would have accelerated my growth as a clinician. But since my schedule was solely dependent upon my diagnosing ability, it resulted in an empty schedule. And I was just sitting around doing nothing most days. Now the other owner did not practice dentistry anymore, but he would come in once or twice a month to coach me. His coaching was valuable, however his coaching style was not a good fit for me. He would analyze my radiographs after the work that I did. He would then proceed to critique it and tell me all the things that I did wrong and the things that I could improve. Now don't get me wrong, some analysis of your own work is crucial to improving the quality of care, and I'm all for it. But his harsh feedback with no positivity led me to second guess my abilities as a dentist. He would also simulate patient interactions and quiz me on different things. It didn't matter how I answered these questions. Anything I said, he would tell me I was wrong and then would tell me another way that he thought was the right way. This took such a negative toll on my experience because it completely shattered my confidence as a clinician. And when you don't have confidence as a clinician, it is scary. It's the last thing that you want as a new dentist in the real world. Now don't get me wrong, I was not doing bad work. It just wasn't to this non-practicing dentist standards. 
If you're in a situation where you are having your work being actively reviewed by another dentist, be careful. You need to always be willing to learn and improve. But if you find that you can't do anything right in their eyes, that is a huge red flag and you need to start looking for a job elsewhere. So let's evaluate this associateship. There's three questions you have to answer when you're evaluating an associateship. Is the pay good? Is the office vibe or dynamic good? Are you learning anything? So the pay at this job was $500 a day. It was a daily guarantee, but it only lasted for four months. And I wasn't doing enough dentistry to be able to produce over that minimum. The office vibe was great, except for the days where the non-practicing owner would come in. I had a lot of anxiety on those days and it was not good for my mental health. I was learning things, but I wasn't able to implement them because I wasn't seeing enough patients. So after working for four months at this office, I actually got a call from HR on my day off. They told me that they were going to let me go and that I didn't need to come to work the next day. I asked why and they said that they realized that the office wasn't busy enough for two dentists. They didn't give me a notice and they didn't have to either because in my contract, I did not have a notice period for termination. And that's 100% on me. My advice, do not sign a contract if there is no notice period. You are allowed to have one and it needs to be in the contract to protect yourself. If the owner isn't willing to put it in, that's a red flag on their part. So I like to look at every opportunity that I have as a learning experience in life. Now, while I was upset in the moment when I got let go and for some time after, I look back and I see that this experience was actually beneficial for me. I learned that if the practice does not have an existing doctor that you are replacing, it is gonna be risky from the standpoint of patient volume. I learned that analyzing your work is healthy and should be done, but don't be so hard on yourself to where you lack confidence afterwards. I learned that an opportunity can sound perfect when going into it, but reality can be very different. I also learned that dentists in the real world are looking out for themselves and their practice first before the success of the associate. It's a shame but it's a harsh reality. So what can you do to avoid situations like this? One, ask questions at the interview. Things like, how is the patient split gonna be between the doctors? Will my work be critiqued? Is there an established patient population? Or will I be expected to diagnose and build my own schedule? Will I have support from the dentist that I'm working with? Will you be able to work with me and help me if I struggle to get busy? What is expected of me as an associate? These questions are going to help you paint a picture of expectations from their side and also let you know what is actually going to happen in this practice. You will have the guidelines as to how you can be successful in that opportunity. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please drill that like and subscribe button and share it with anyone you think may benefit from it. If you're wondering what I did after I got let go from this job, check out part two. Thanks. See you there.